Well, good morning. It is a Friday morning. This is a recorded devotion for a Friday, March 19th, day 27 of Lent. We are nearing the uh, three quarter mark of, of this. Uh, it seems like a long journey. You know, again, at the beginning of Lent, I, I remarked that it felt like uh, you know, the p- pandemic started in the midst of Lent, and it kind of felt like we've not left the season of Lent for for the better part of the year. But even as Easter is is approaching, and the hope of the empty tomb is uh, drawing nearer, there is there is a sense of hope, I think, in in the air, isn't there? Uh, spring is is sprung. I was going to say spring is springing, but. Uh, Spring is, is coming, there's there's warmth to the sunshine, warmth to the air, there's hope of, of life getting back to, to more normal, uh, increasing each and every day. And so we give thanks to God for, for his goodness, for all of his goodness and all of that. As we uh, turn to hear God's word today, though, I do encourage us to, to quiet ourselves, to focus on him, be attentive to his words, and to invite his his very spirit to be speaking his words of life and his words of truth to each of us today. So would you just take a moment in the quietness of wherever you are to, to invite the Lord's presence, the Lord's leading and directing here this morning in his word. So our first reading we heard yesterday is uh, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. This is a prayer that we often use for a time of confession, David's uh, psalm of, of confession. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Indeed, that's our prayer, a prayer today and each day, that the Lord would sustain us, that the Lord would continue his, his, his refining work in our hearts and our lives, even as we lay them down, yielded, surrendered before him. So this morning, we're going to turn now to hear Exodus 30, verses 1 to 10. Exodus 30, verses 1 to 10. Make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubit long and a cubit wide, and two cubits uh, high. I'm just looking to see. It's about one and a half feet long and wide and about three feet high. Again, we don't measure things in cubits, right? Uh, but make this uh, an altar for burning incense and uh, with its horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all sides and the horns with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that is before the Ark of the Testimony, before the atonement cover that is over the testimony where I will meet you. Aaron must burn fragrant incense 
on the altar every morning when he tends the lambs. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight, so incense will burn regularly before the Lord in, for the generations to come. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. It is most holy to the Lord. So just describing that place of, of offering, that place of, of sacrifice, of that covering uh, for God's people many, many, many years ago, that covering that had to be done once a year uh, for, the, for the payment, the atonement of, of uh, their sins. And that really leads us into uh, then uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 4. You know, much of these same thoughts of, of Jesus being our once for all sacrifice, how Jesus is a, a better high priest than, than Aaron, how Jesus has come to fulfill once and for all the, the work of the priests of the Old Testament, you know, the, the sacrifices and everything else, that that's all, all fulfilled for us by a Jesus himself. And so we hear Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 14 and carrying through the first few verses of chapter 5. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Every high priest is selected from among men and is appointed to represent them in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as the sins of all the people. No one takes his honor upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. And again, that reminder of Jesus, that great high priest, who has shed his blood for you and for me. And really that's what we, we celebrate. That's what we rejoice in day in and day out. So would you pray with me this morning? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for, for the sending of your son who willingly laid down his life as, as that once for all sacrifice for us. And he willingly took what was coming to us, death and condemnation and separation from you. He took that upon himself. And now, Lord, when you look at me, when you look at each of us, you see us not for, for what we've done or what we've fail to do, but you see us as redeemed and, and beloved children of God. We pray, Lord, for the strength of your spirit to live as, as those people, live as, as your people, called by you, redeemed by you, loved by you. Holy Spirit, renew us, strengthen us to walk in our faith and in our hope trusting in our Savior's good work for us. And so trusting in, in him, we boldly pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So thanks for being here this morning for this uh, recorded morning devotion. We'll have one more uh, devotion this week, uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Again, just a reminder about worship on Sunday. Uh, the capacity has increased. We're still continuing with the two services for now, 9.30 and 11. The 11 o'clock service is live stream. So if you can't make it, you're welcome to join us for that. But thanks for being here. And as you, you go about your Friday, we receive God's blessing. Now may the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you tomorrow in somewhat quasi-recorded uh, <laughs> form, however that works. Blessings on your day.